We did this right after after Chinese Boogie, didn't we? That's right. Well, Chinese Boogie, of course, it became one of my probably my well after husbands, I guess, my fondest project. And the fact that it wasn't accepted by the critics really hurt. <laughs> and going back to work with John with such enthusiasm and optimism, he, he was indomitable. This guy just burrowed ahead. Nobody could conquer him. No. You never knew, I've never saw him moan or complain. Never. So the fact that uh, the Chinese book he hadn't done well financially, he still put up his own money to do uh, opening night. Yep. Didn't stop him. What are you thinking about? Are you home? Am I home? <sighs> oh, God. What do you mean, am I home? Well, I remember the first day of shooting, for instance. And I, I was really, <clears throat> came down to Pasadena, right? Yeah. I thought it would be a theater the size of the Morasco or the Booth or the Music Box. No, it seemed like Radio City Music Hall. All right. 3,000 people get this. <laughs> I said, now, wait a minute. Now, he's going to have to fill this with extras, right? And they showed up. Real people, put not a, extras. Put a little ad, put a little ad in, in the, the Pasadena, Pasadena paper right. and said, anybody who has a... They not only show they show up in black tie yeah, and long and, all, and, and, and... And then the reaction to the material. Oh, you yeah. could never get that from real, real no. ex professional actors. They were so wonderful. Terrific. It's hard to cover it up. Congratulations. It's hard to cover it up. <laughs> it is very hard to cover it up. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> but you remember, John said, um, you know, we can't, because you have to change and set up, yeah. you know, and we're used to it in the film yeah. business, but it's pretty boring right. to wait for 45 minutes while you think. And John said, we can't expect them just to sit there. He'd go out and entertain them. Go out and entertain them. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, go out and do that slow motion boxing you do. I said, <laughs> John, I have, Heels this high, I have tight black dress, a hat. Yeah. I said, he said, go on. I went, that, that doesn't matter, they'll understand. And so I did. And then they had, uh, then all the other guys, I think it was Draper, went out and sang. Right. And uh, Finnegan right. went out and sang. And then they told stories just to, just to fill up that thing. And they just sat there so nicely, so yeah. appreciative. Terrific. And then, of course, there's Joan Blondell and, and Paul Stewart and these people who had never worked in this fashion before. So Joan Blondell just didn't know where the camera would be, you know, because he's following me over with the whole handheld. She said, is he going to follow me to the bathroom? Is he going to follow me all over with that thing? What is that thing? What, is, <laughs> what, what did he do? She said, I can't tell whether anyone's <laughs> acting or not, or That's they're just talking. Are they acting or they're not? They, are we on a break? <laughs> She was so sweet. She was darling. Uh, so Joan played in the play. She was lovely. After she, had, she, after she found out what she was supposed to do, she was lovely. And she was supposed to do nothing. Yeah, just, just relax. Be herself. And just, she was, I don't know if the word endearing is yeah. good enough for her. She got a Golden Globe nomination. Yeah, Are you kidding did. me? It's wonderful. This is my wife. She's a princess. See my kids? I got a lot of kids. John Tool, do you remember who the big played, handsome uh, guy yeah, that yeah. plays in the, the play, play within, within the, play. the play? Yes, yeah. and he comes in and he was a teamster. I know. He, he wasn't an actor. He wasn't an actor. John rehearsed them more than he rehearsed us. He certainly I did. <laughs> that, he's, he's just so I'm his great big guy. He's Wait just a minute, exactly yeah. right. And somehow he talked him into doing it. I I imagine he must have been terrified yeah. to walk on that stage and see. Three or four thousand people sitting there, and yet he was good. He was wonderful. Yes, he was. One day, I'm sorry. He I'm... he he was holding me. Uh, I can't remember some action in the play, and and John got talking to him, and talking to him, and talking, and they were talking and talking, and he was a big guy. He was a strong guy, yeah. and I thought, um, I think I should get down. <laughs> and finally, John said, it was about four minutes. He was standing there. With I said, oh, 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 put it on, put it on. <laughs> and he did, he was so funny. He wrote such a nice letter after John died, and he said that um, there had been the high point of, yeah, of, his, uh, of life. his life and that there's anything he could do for any of us, he yeah, would. So sweet. He was sweet. Yeah. Coffee into a black coffee. Oh, no, I can't. 
your gunk scenes are terrific. I you did it. another one in uh, a mini in Moscow. It said, you know who talked about that with me? No. Audrey Hepburn. She really? thought She thought that was a one, wonderful scene where you're falling down the stairs. You know, <laughs> how beautifully you did that, how, like a dancer, she said. And yeah, and, and then you did like a dancer. It was wonderful. Wonderful. And I have to make you. And you have and, to. Yeah, make you, but and we never, never rehearsed it. I know. Putting that makeup on, which oh, is impossible when someone's And we did it in that. one, you know. I that's mean, the first time was good. That's right. No. They, he covered it a little bit with the, with the hand held. But the, the first time out, we, we struck gold. It was never better. But only John could get away with that. Yeah. An actress that drunk, you'd put her in a, in a, in a hospital. You know? he, hey. put, he put you on stage. I've acted with actresses <laughs> at <that> John. <laughs> and notice that you were a teetotaler, more or less. Well, compared to you guys, I <laughs> <laughs> You're right. God, the booze we consumed. John was very interesting in the way he wrote uh, the men movies and the women movies as people broke them up. And, and truly, they were. Um, I can understand how I knew about the guys. But really, I never was quite sure how he knew so much about women and and faces and stuff when those older women yeah. were acting with Seymour and they he could just yeah. make all their dreams you could see what they were as younger people and how what they're striving for and that kiss in faces for instance where Seymour kisses the older lady yeah. was so beautiful 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 you never saw that in film in all of his movies, actually, he has some. He shows a great deal of compassion I'm, I'm and understanding. He liked women. I'm not ready to play grandmothers yet. You know, you're very clever. If I'm good at this part, my career is severely limited. Limited to what? Once you're convincing in a part, the audience accepts you as that. As what? As old. That's what old. Well, was it really was fe the fear of aging uh, 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 the, no. the the main issue in her? I personally think she just didn't want to be in a lousy show. The writer Joan Blondell, she was the one who was really age conscious, mm -hmm. and she was pushing it and pushing it. How old are you? Well, if you can't say your age, then you can't accept my play. My character was also getting. Old and older, older, and not able to play the young young part. She couldn't, so she could see the handwriting on the this wall. This girl too. who haunts you, who keeps showing up, is part of her existence in your imagination, or is she real? Does she really get killed out there, or is it a metaphor for something else? I thought that it was my imagination. Right. I'm the one that saw her get killed. Yeah. I'm the one that said, stop the car. Right. And, there was a girl, and then I'm the one that called the police. Yeah. And then I'm the one that was there uh, when I got rid of her at yeah. the end. But nobody else really seemed to, to really see her. What the hell are you doing? If I could rid myself of you. Are you going over your lines? I definitely thought that it was. In your imagination. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the name of that girl? Laura Johnson. She was good. Yeah. She was in Harry Master George's Very place. pretty girl. Beautiful girl yeah. and very talented. Harry came up with, you know, he had a, a great acting class out here, and he was a friend of John's. They'd gone to school uh, together. So he called me and said, you should really try this girl out because she's uh -huh. wonderful. And she was. Yes, she was. I'm 17 years old. I like sex. And that's what the theater is. It's sex. People say like that John really. is so realistic and that that young girl of my imagination and it was so surreal that it was it was mm -hmm. hard to understand. It did seem surreal, but we actors know that that is realistic because actors use anything they can to get to where their character has to be. And sometimes they make up Amazing things, or they do amazing things mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that you know sane people wouldn't do, and she did. Myrtle did need her, mm -hmm. right. and she Everything needed the youth, her youth. I want you. 
super strength, dream building, happiness, fun, emotion. Babe. Practically anything. Babe. No, no. I love you. No. I love you. Hey, no. I am Superman! Hey. I realized how dangerous it is to try to recapture what you had when you were young. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's not right. It's not in rhythm with the world. And so I thought that that was a, a, a wonderfully conceived idea by John. Yeah. John talked about aging a great deal th during the shooting of this picture. Yeah. I mean, he might have been talking about himself. Too. I think maybe. Yeah. When I look at my face in the mirror when I'm shaving in the morning, you know what I see? I can see it then in my face. It's hard to cover it up. There's what? something deeply cynical about my face. And then he said that funny line. He said, uh, we're not the same. He said, there's something wrong with a smile. I've thought of that often, because there is something wrong with a smile. Yeah. And he said, we're not us. And he said, you think someone come and get us at night and steal us nicely? <laughs> And it's, it's, it's something that I'm sure resonates with anybody who is not 25. There's someone posing here as us, and you're right. There is something definitely wrong with your smile. <laughs> and, you know, and we're doing that thing back and forth. And he said, OK, I have a problem. And I, how do I solve this? I'm getting old. I'm getting old. What do we do about that? And it really hit me on stage. I do want to be your friend. Yeah, well, I don't want to be your friend. It was not the script. No. We so were doing it there on stage for the first time while they were shooting? Yeah. Terrific. The point is, it didn't seem loosey-goosey Im Im improvised. It seemed structured. When was I ever funny? I never heard you tell one stinking joke, and you never laugh at anyone else. I never, used to be funny. Never. I used to be very funny. When? When I was a kid. I felt a little jealous because you'd come in the next day and, and have this remarkable re re uh, relationship with each other, or joking around on stage, changing the script. Part of it is improvising the material to loosen it up. And I always wondered, how did you guys do that? How did you do that? Well, did you do it at night? No, we didn't. We talked about what we shot during the day yeah. and things that we got a special kick out of. But I didn't know any more than you did about going into the next day. Really? Mm-hmm. Never did on anything. John would say something, I'd answer. Want to see something wonderful? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and he'd have a certain attitude, and I'd have an attitude back. And, what do you call good actors? The place where he starts to go like this, and I yeah. take that. Like that. Yeah. I didn't know that was coming. The shaking of the hands? Yeah. Get <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> and then he said, put your leg out. Could you raise your right leg? The other way, please? No. <laughs> the other way, please. <laughs> and that was the first time you'd heard those lines? Absolutely. Uh, remarkable, because really, I'm not kidding. It seemed like it was rehearsed at home. I thought, oh, those guys, that's what they do. They go home and they rehearse. I guess you know? a lot of people would rethink that, but we didn't. Got well, the scene with Zora right? Lambert, you know, when Zora and I, you say it's a strange marriage, and I, I got into that scene expecting, well, she'll freeze me out, she'll, she'll be sulking. She'll there, and the phone will ring. You're on the phone asking me to come up, yeah. and uh, she'll get jealous, and you'll see a close up of her face. The way I directed with the, the jealousy, maybe tears coming. No, she started making faces, doing them, falling off the bed, uh, <laughs> annoying me, pulling on me, et cetera, et cetera. And that was all a surprise, and it made the scene work. Oh, because she was wonderful. And you're trying to keep, is, yeah, keep your keep star right, right. from being hysterical, and your wife from leaving, and, and she's right. doing, and she's going right. sinuously yeah, across right. the bed, and, and, and it was uh, funny. And not letting her know how, re, uh, how, how much affection I feel toward mm -hmm. you and all that stuff. Yeah, she was wonderful in the scene. Yeah, you see, you have no sense of humor. I told you that. And then, I of course, who would know? I thought Al Rubin, for instance, was the producer, the money man. I didn't know. That was the best kept secret for me, that he was going to photograph. He, he was our DP. Yeah. The director of photography. Until I got down there you just... to see him ordering people around. I said, What, are you the cameraman? <laughs> yeah. 
How about and, this? Yeah, well, I thought the camera work was uh, first class. Oh, I did too. And, and uh, you know, and you know, people and, looked. The faces were wonderful. Yeah, people looked good. Al taught himself too. And he self taught. Nobody, yeah, he was self taught. He did faces. I know. And I asked That's John. His favorite picture. <laughs> faces. <laughs> I asked John. At the time, I said, "What is it that it makes uh, one cameraman better?" I said, "What." Uh, what quality is it? And John said, for me, he said, it's the skin. Yeah. He said, when I want to reach out and touch the skin, yeah. he said, then the cameraman has yeah. uh, done his work. Right. And Al certainly, yeah, certainly did. Yeah. He was wonderful. No tricks. No. No, no, no. Uh, just uh, some beautiful, gorgeous. I seem to have lost the uh, the reality of, of, of the... Uh, Reality. All of those huge pictures hanging yeah, as backed right. on up. The wall, of, on the wall of the old Greek lady. Yeah, that Sam Shaw had taken yeah, right. when he was there with Tony Quinn actually doing yeah. Zorba. He went around all the islands taking the. I met Sam Shaw in 1955 when he came backstage with Joe DiMaggio when Joe was married to Marilyn Monroe. Really? To see me and Carol Hunting Roof. He seemed to have been the favorite, the favorite uh, sounding board and. Uh, Amenuances of, of artists. Yeah. John just and loved John him. used them a great deal to, loved to throw throw ideas at him, to walk the floor. And his his knowledge of art was extensive. Yes, I know. And he wasn't verbal. He was not a verbal no. person. No. But he was highly intelligent. Yeah. But, and, and they John do the would, posters together. You know, they start doing the posters before That's they right. made the film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean they start doing the campaign. Yeah. Before they made the film. They I love that about John. Part. Yeah. Well, we never talked about John in that regard. His, his sense of PR, his sense of publicity was terrific. His, his sense of style, his ad campaigns wound up to be wonderful. The one for Woman Under Influence was terrific. Yeah. And then we just jump up and go put them all around. Well, we, me, John, and whoever, we, we go, go with the rolls of posters for husbands, <laughs> put them all over New York. <laughs> yes. Must have visited 9,000 bars. And restaurants. Yeah. And people loved them. They were happy right. to put them up. Yeah. They were beautiful posters. They were. They were beautiful. And Sam and has just a one, great deal of response. Sam would never have one poster. There'd be three different ones. Yes. Opposite. When you think of it, independent, all independents can hardly get the money to finish a right. much less by Publicity. advertising right. in the in the newspapers right. or magazines yeah. or, God forbid, television. Right. It's just... You can't. More, more than the, the right. movie cost. So then he and Sam came up with making those beautiful posters. Well, you know better than I do about the money uh, problems uh, in, uh, at, at issue often when John made a picture because uh, it was money, money, money. The money was going and it was his money. And we had to close down the picture for a month. Yeah. So he could, and nobody moved, nobody took another job. Isn't that interesting? No, but he said, we're going to make it, give me some time. And then he came back in a month, Everyone and he had the picture. I think that opened the, the big theater where his office was. When big was Fox. Wiltshire? Uh, Fox, Fox Wiltshire. Wiltshire. He opened it just before the Academy. I don't think it Academy. was overseas. No. Was it? It, it was open, he opened it a couple of weeks before the Academy Awards, I remember. And then he pulled it. And he didn't open it again anywhere until in, uh, uh, Europe. Uh, in Europe. And you're there again, the Europeans ador adored his work. In one Very yeah. popular picture in Europe. Uh, yeah. Well, in Europe. Europe found your, Europe found John, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't Europe. Oh, yes. England found uh, England. shadows. And then France really embraced him. After That's that. right. Yeah. And even today, the Europeans have a whole other... Um, I mean, his, word, his, his name in France is magic. Do you find that people remember? I mean, it's been a long time since we made those. They remember the films. Do they? They sure do. Sure. And now, of course, every college kid seems to know about Johnson here, here in America. Well, those film uh, schools, All those film I schools, etc. He's become a kind of a god. And one of the reasons was, you know, <clears throat> opening night. You would think a film about the theater and a film so out there about the theater would not interest uh, these kids, but they seem to be interested. In. I am always surprised, too, at that. Uh, I knew it would interest us and the rest of the actors. Yeah. So, uh, if you look at any of his films today, they're as fresh or fresher than they were when he made them. 
I, I don't know really the answer to that. It's the way he shot, what he looked for in behavior of people, etc. That was just unlike uh, any any director that's ever ever worked. And uh, when he hears the word auteur or the, a director's film, he said it made me want to vomit. You know, he didn't yes, want, he hated that. He hated that auteur word. He said the film is between the director and the actors. That's what makes the films. He said the, he didn't even say the directors, he said the actors. I just think you look at John's films and you know they're fiction, but you know you're not being lied to. Right. He was the real goods, and you just feel it looking at his picture, and I think that, that yeah. fascinates people. It does, too. It doesn't make it easy. You see, he doesn't lead you lead you in sentiment, no. or he'll lead you in laughter, or leave you in anger. You, you really have to work hard when you're watching a Casavetti's mm -hmm. film. They're not easy. Oh, no. They're not easy at all, because they, 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 uh, they, they, I, I, I don't know. You expect, you expect someone to laugh and they cry. You expect someone to get angry and they, and they laugh. It, it, it's, it's all strange. Sometimes all... people would laugh. Yeah. And the other people in the audience would say, shh, hush, yeah, shh. Right, right, right. I'm going to tell this. I never told this before. John came to see uh, <clears throat> Huey do a virtual one-man show I did where I got great reviews, but business was off, and we were closing, and I was down. And he came to see the closing night. <clears throat> and we go across the street, Pete, and he said, Ben, we're going to do a picture together. So I said, yeah, John, pictures, pictures. Don't you like the theater? Now I'm into the theater, right? I said, well, you don't want to do theater? Why, why is it you like film so much? And he said, immortality. I'll never forget that. And he has it, doesn't he? He was right. It was a wonderful period. Yeah. The feeling amongst all of yeah. this group. Yeah. I don't know <clears throat> that that it happens very often, really. Oh, it doesn't happen often. I'm sure there are groups around town of young kids who like each other and mm -hmm. work with each other, but not as exciting as we were. Truly. Yeah, truly. <laughs>